This is lecture number six. Let's begin with the summary of the previous lectures. Um, yeah, um, in the previous lecture, uh, uh, there were two important concepts. One of the uh, concept was the um, Hermitian matrix and then yeah, related property such as the diagonalization. And another property was the um, function of the operator. Yeah, so let's begin with the um, review of the diagonalization. We all know that the um, Hermitian operator can be, um, when the Hermitian operator is represented in terms of the matrix, if we um, select the basis carefully, then we can make it diagonal form. And then uh, such kind of, uh, the choice of the um, uh, basis is uh, by choosing all the bases composed of the eigenvectors of the given operator. And moreover, the next question was, how can, uh, can we find out the uh, common um, basis which will diagonalize more uh, uh, two or more than two um, um, operators? And the answer is, if those um, 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 Hermitian operators commute with each other, then in principle, you should be able to find out the simultaneous um, base. Uh, si uh, you can find out the uh, single basis which will simultaneously diagonalize all those um, um, operators. Another concept was the concept of the function of the operator. And then the uh, most uh, um, popular example of the um, function of the operator is the exponential uh, function of the operator. And typically the um, function of the operator can be imagined in terms of, uh, in the same line with the function of the um, of classical value or C value. And then um, the, the strategy you should use is uh, going through the Taylor series. And then um, using um, this kind of um, um, uh, um, the um, expansion, and also the concept of the uh, diagonalization of the Hermitian operator, then in principle, if we represent the function of the operator in the, with the um, eigenbasis of the given uh, operator, then we will also obtain the diagonal matrix corresponding to the function of this um, operator. And then another um, concept was the, um, yeah, so another related concept was the, um, um, differentiation of the um, function of the operator. And then especially when you are given this kind of um, 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 differential equation, which is the typical form of the Schrodinger, uh, what is called so-called as a Schrodinger equation, then the, um, this um, um, exponential function of the operator can satisfy the, this shape of the uh, differential e um, equation. And then um, a typical uh, form of the um, solution looks uh, similar to this one. And then, um, yeah, in this case, um, what we should notice is that this um, operator, which is multiplied to the initial uh, state of the uh, initial vector of the uh, given problem, then we call this, uh, uh, this operator will be unitary. And then sometimes we call this um, operator as the propagator. Today, in today's lecture, um, well, yeah, so in the previous lecture, I basically gave you some example of this um, solving the uh, differential equation of this type. And today, I will give more examples related to this one. And then yeah, today's example is not the um, um, quantum mechanical um, solution but the process of solving the problem is very similar to how you would solve the um, um, Schrodinger equation in the quantum mechanics. And then from that uh, process, I hope that you can get some um, sense of how to deal with um, the um, quantum mechanical problem. Before I uh, discuss the uh, more details about the quantum mechanics, Let's, um, re uh, let's briefly uh, um, overview the, uh, some of the properties of the quantum mechanics. Well, uh, surprisingly enough, um, quantum mechanics is generally defined or um, described using some of the postulates. So postulate generally means that you cannot prove it, 
but uh, we just uh, accept it as given. And then by, uh, by using those postulates, then the, every, the, rest, of the uh, part, uh, re rest of the properties can be derived based on those postulates. So, um, um, uh, so yeah, quantum mechanics is almost like a, uh, some mathematical structure. And then there are uh, most, uh, most important uh, uh, postulates, uh, three uh, postulates. And then the first, uh, uh, and then uh, today uh, we will uh, look at only two postulates. And then the first postulate we have to consider is that the uh, quantum state of the particle is represented by a vector in a Hilbert space. And then yeah, probably you saw the uh, Hilbert space for the first time for many of us, uh, many, many of you yeah, saw uh, the concept of the Hilbert space for the first time. But the concept of the Hilbert space is relatively simple. Yeah, it, yeah compared to its um, um, a little bit uh, scary uh, name, Hil uh, yeah, basically Hilbert space means the vector space. And then um, inside that vector space, we need to con uh, we need to have the definition of the inner space uh, inner product so yeah in the first lecture i emphasized that the um, concept of the vector space is uh, actually a little bit different from the inner space uh, inner inner product space because um, some of the vector space might not have the well defined concept of the inner uh, inner product but still it can be uh, it is a, a valid uh, a vector space so yeah hilbert space basically requires that the um, vector space should have a well-defined um, inner product. And then moreover, yeah, Hilbert space is slightly different from the inner, inner product space because that it also requires some property called as a complete. And then um, the definition of the comp complete is all, um, requires some mathematical uh, description. So I will, um, uh, go more detail about the Hilbert space in the next lecture, but um, in today's lecture, and then for most of the, for the rest of the uh, this class, uh, for rest of this semester, you can just uh, consider consider the Hilbert space means the inner product space, and then you won't have any problem for most of case. So um, then let's um, um, imagine what does uh, this statement or this postulate one may mean. Let's assume that we are interested in, <clears throat> in the um, mass, which is connected through the uh, connected to the wall through a um, spring uh, spring, and the spring this spring has the uh, spring constant of k, and the mass of this uh, uh, this one is m. And again, yeah, this example is not the quantum mechanical example, but I'm just uh, trying to solve this problem in terms of the um, Classical mechanics, and then still, the, yeah, in, in the middle of the process, you will see how uh, yeah you uh, you will see, you can see how the uh, the um, solution of the classical mechanics can be um, compared to the solution uh, how you can solve the um, quantum mechanical problem. So yeah, to solve this kind of um, harmonic oscillator problem, the first thing you have to do is first define the um, position of um, x equals zero. So yeah, let's assume that uh, we, uh, we are just uh, yeah, fixing this one as a reference uh, starting point. And then of course, this um, uh, mass can be um, extended to whatever we can imagine. Yeah, so um, yeah, this can be uh, uh, extended up to here. And then for this case, um, the, the position of this um, um, mass we will call it as a, a x, and then as you can see here, I define a uh, right-hand direction as the a positive x, and then um, right uh, left uh, left direction as the negative, and then the also assume that at time t equals zero. Yeah, I just uh, extended this um, uh, spring uh, up to the length of a, and then uh, I just. Uh, I just release it at time t equals zero. Yeah, so I'm, I'm holding this one with my hand and then uh, let it go at uh, time t equals zero, zero without applying any additional force. Then how does this um, mass will behave? Well, yeah, so to find out that 
yeah, we need to find out the, um, we need to solve the uh, differential equation. So how, how can you, this, uh, how can you set up the differential equation corresponding to this situation? So yeah, the first thing we have to use for the uh, classical mechanics is the uh, Newton's second law, which says that the, um, um, the um, acceleration is proportional to the, um, to the first, and then the proportional constant is uh, connected through the um, mass m. So in other words, um, uh, mass times the acceleration of this one, which I, I will yeah, just, I can just use that uh, second time derivative of the x is um, the same as the first. And then how much is the first? If the, uh, the spring is um, extended by additional uh, amount of x, that means that this spring, yeah, so uh, x equals means, uh, x equals zero means that the, uh, the spring won't apply any uh, apply zero force, and then yeah, as it is extended uh, to the positive direction, then the the amount of uh, force is proportional to x and k. So x k is the amount of uh, size of the magnitude of the force. Then what about the direction? If the um, uh, spring is extended to the right uh, to the right direction, that means that the spring will apply the force uh, pointing to the left direction on this one. So when we are calculating this one, then uh, to reflect the fact that it is a left, uh, left direction, we have to use minus sign in front of the kx. So this is the uh, um, equation for this one. And then of course we can just uh, move uh, this um, 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 mass to the, um, to the denominator for this guy. Yeah, so I can just uh, yeah, move this one. Then what is the solution for this one? Well, most of you already know that the solution for this one should be something like uh, A. Yeah, so this is the um, second uh, second derivative equation, which uh, with uh, which uh, and then second derivative is the uh, um, proportional to the uh, original um, original value. In this case, you can uh, you know that the the solution will be either uh, sine or cosine or harmonic um, uh, function. And then yeah, specifically for this one, because I assume that the uh, initial uh, condition at time t equals zero, uh, zero is that the length of the, uh, the value of the x is uh, a. And when I let it, uh, let it go, let it, uh, when I, when I um, release the mass, I do because I do not apply any force, and then at t equals zero, the speed of this mass was zero, so the solution will be um, a times cosine square root of k over m t, or something like this. Let me. So um, well, yeah, yeah. So one, yeah, if you solve the uh, um, equation, then you get uh, this kind of um, a solution. But let's um, um, solve this equation with a little bit different uh, approach. So one thing we we should note is that uh, the the uh, speed of speed of that mass we can use the v, and v is uh, related to the first time derivative of x. And then the, in this case, this equation can be rewritten in the form of the uh, v, first time derivative of v is equal to minus k over m times x. And then I can also rewrite uh, this equation in this way. Yeah, which is just the, um, the same. And then why, why did I do that? Because I want to you know, uh, change this uh, um, simultaneous equation in the form of the uh, matrix equation. So what that means is that, that is uh, V uh, time derivative of V and X uh, time derivative X is equal to, and then I want to set up this type of the equation which means that um, this one is zero and this one is k over m. And for this one, oh, sorry, yeah, I made the mistake. Yeah, so that means that v 
x and then for this guy yeah it is something like this one and then um we can yeah we can uh, uh, because both of them are uh, have the first time derivative so we can just do uh, yeah, rewrite this situation with the uh, d over dt yeah so that's the uh, um, um, equation we need to solve to solve this um, problem then um, we know that um, um, eventually uh, this situation uh, for uh, because we know that this will be the final solution so on the other end, we can also immediately found that, find that V of T will be the simple time derivative of X, which is this one. And then if we uh, calculate the time derivative of this guy, then it is minus A times square root of K over M and it will be sine square root of K over M and T. Yeah, so this is just a simple uh, solution of the um, second derivative um, ordinary uh, differential equation. So why do I bother with this? Well, yeah, let's um, try to imagine what will happen to this mass over the time. So to represent or to visualize the solution, we can think about the uh, plotting the uh, state, uh, uh, mechanical status of the uh, mechanical state of the mass. So let's. Um, plot the, uh, uh, let's use the uh, horizontal axis as uh, A and then vertical axis, axis as a V. And then you know, according to these two equations, uh, to this uh, solution, then the, at time t equals zero, then the you know, x, of, uh, x will be A while the V will be zero, which means we can plot, uh, you know, we can note with this, um, um, this point, and as the uh, time increases, then the, uh, this one will get uh, smaller, and this one, yeah, uh, a sign will be increased, but there is a minus sign, so it will gradually move the location like this one. And this is not so cool, but uh, it will be um, um, elliptical shape because uh, uh, the amplitudes are different. Yeah, and then the yeah, it will just uh, follow this uh, trajectory over the time and you will keep moving like this one. So why do I show with this um, plot? That's because I want to emphasize that the solution or the state, yeah, of course, this is not the quantum state. It is a, a classical state of this, um, um, this mass can be still described by the vector. So um, yeah, um, of course, you might just think that yeah, um, the state of this one can be represented by the x, but x is not enough because we know that according to the um, um, Newton's law, the the future of some object will be uh, will be fixed if we know the um, dynamics and also the um, initial condition including the uh, initial location of the mass and then initial uh, velocity. And then at each of the time, yeah, the velocity and the location will be changing like this one. But if we know any of this, then in principle, we should be able to predict what will happen to, the, um, to that uh, mass in the future. So yeah, um, representing the status of, uh, state of the uh, mass is more uh, natural if we use the vector rather than just the number. Yeah, so that, that is uh, um, one kind of um, concept we can use. We can still use the um, uh, quantum mechanics, but of course in quantum mechanics, if you are familiar with the quantum case, then um, the uh, location and the, uh, the position and then a momentum are not, a momentum which is directly related to velocity are not completely independent. So yeah, such kind of concept should be more generalized. But my point here is that um, um, even in the quantum, uh, even in the classical mechanics, you can see something like this one, which is very similar to what we uh, saw in the a few, uh, in a previous case. So um, this um, equation is not the same, exactly the same as this one, but um, overall the solution uh, is similar to uh, this kind of si uh, situation. And then we know that yeah, um, the solution of this one can be eventually 
represented in the form of the um, exponential ex uh, i to the omega psi at time t equals zero, something like this one. So um, it, yeah, the solution of this one can be also uh, represented similar to this fashion. I hope now you are a little bit more comfortable with uh, this statement or this uh, first postulate. So what is the next postulate? The next um, postulate is that the evolution of the closed quantum system, in other words, the vector, um, yeah, vec uh, the quantum, uh, quantum system state will be represented by the sum vector. And then how the yeah, evolution of that uh, quantum system means that evolution of this vector is basically uh, described by a unitary transformation, which means that the um, next state will be connected to the uh, for a previous state through a, a unitary transformation. So um, of course, uh, uh, what yeah, if you hear this statement, then still it will be a little bit confusing. So let me just give you some example. So we know that the the, uh, the uh, vector vector representing some quantum state of the particle is represented as a vector in the Hilbert space. So let's uh, uh, let's imagine very simple sp uh, uh, Hilbert space with uh, only uh, which is only two dimensional space. So it will have a uh, um, basis one and another basis two, and then. In principle, the uh, yeah, assume that the uh, state of the, some um, um, some particle uh, quantum state is uh, quantum state of some particle is the uh, can, uh, is represented by the some um, abstract vector in this kind of vector space. Then um, yeah, um, and then let's also assume that the um, um, the well, uh, oh yeah, let me. Yeah, instead of using one and two, yeah, let's just use the uh, zero and one vector so that I can also uh, relate this one to the uh, concept of the um, digital. Yeah, so you know that the digital state can be generally represented by um, binary number or uh, binary digit bit. And then the, the probably, yeah, assume that uh, we have some one bit memory and then one bit memory can either um, contain the value of zero or one. And then if we, uh, if we have zero, and then if we apply the NOT gate, then we know that this will be changed to a one. And then if the you know, original, uh, the initial state was one, and then um, if it goes through the uh, uh, NOT gate, then it will become zero. So how can we extend, uh, uh, how can we apply this kind of concept to the um, uh, quantum mechanics? Well, one, one option is that uh, um, assume that uh, uh, zero, zero state is re uh, represented in, in the vector space uh, or the uh, uh, vector space uh, with the uh, uh, component of zero and one. And then assume that the uh, um, um, one vector is then represented by uh, one and zero uh, column vector. And then assume that we have, uh, uh, and then in uh, quantum logic, the NOT gate will be generally represented by the uh, something called as X gate, and the X gate generally has this kind of component. So uh, this is matrix uh, uh, um, matrix um, uh, abstract matrix or abstract algebra, and how is this situation connected uh, connected to uh, this uh, digital logic? Well, if you think about this situation. Then, um, according to the, the past two, the next uh, quantum state is basically described by the unitary transform. So, if the initial state was zero, then the final state will be, um, yeah, the final, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, the final state is. Basically connected to the uh, connected to the uh, um, initial state through the um, some unitary uh, unitary transformation, and then if we apply a such kind of logic to here, then what happens is that um, if we apply um, uh, 
um, um, yeah, sorry, X operator on the well, yeah, yeah. Let's also assume that we apply X operator on vector uh, vector one, uh, vector zero. Then that means that we have to multiply this kind of matrix on the uh, column vector. And then we know that uh, this one means that uh, it will be one and then it will be zero, which is uh, one vector as we defined here. And opposite case, if we, uh, if we replace the, replace this one with the, oops, sorry. Yeah. If we replace uh, this uh, state with the others, then the, yeah, if we apply one, uh, apply X uh, operator on one state, then one state will be represented by this one. And then if we do the multiplication, then it will be zero and this one be one. And then the, um, this um, column vector correspond to zero. So what I just showed you was um, this kind of digital logic can be in principle be also uh, will be described by the um, linear algebra. And then uh, this is not only limited to the um, single gate or sing, um, uh, um, simple list situation, but the entire history of the vector in the Hilbert space uh, and that that vector uh, uh, represent the uh, quantum state of the particle, then they will be always um, described by the uh, unitary transformation. Then the next question is, how is the uh, unitary uh, transformation defined, uh, uh, determined? And then the, uh, and the next answer is that, um, yeah, so the, yeah, that is basically um, described by the postulate two prime. And then, yeah, we call uh, this, uh, uh, well, uh, this postulate is actually from the uh, main text of uh, our class. And then um, typically this is the more um, conventional uh, postulate two. And then what postulate two says is that the uh, quantum state or quantum vector will be generally, uh, the future of the quantum state is basically determined by this uh, um, first order um, differential equation. And, uh, and this equation has its own name, which is called as the Schrodinger equation. And then the, um, yeah, so uh, this is, uh, and, and what uh, the postulate two says is that the, time evolution of the state is basically described by this equation. So how is this postulate two prime is related to the postulate two? And the answer is, um, if you remember how, uh, you, uh, you remember how, how uh, what we, uh, what I showed you in the previous lecture, then in the previous lecture, we saw that the, the solution of this kind of um, this kind of um, um, differential equation um, is uh, something like uh, exponential i omega and psi time t equals zero. So, and then uh, how yeah yeah how is this one related to here? Well, yeah, all you have to do is. Yeah, well, uh, this uh, H, uh, H bar, yeah, we call uh, this symbol as uh, either H bar or H bar. And then this is uh, some, um, this is um, called as a Planck constant, which is a real number. So yeah, all we, uh, we can move all of these uh, factor to the uh, right-hand side, then it will be just uh, described by H, uh, H bar and then I will be, yeah, so we will remove that one and then there will be minus i in front of it. So again, uh, this is, um, yeah, and then this h means that uh, this is call, something called as Hamiltonian. And then the Hamiltonian by itself is already a Hermitian operator. And um, even if we uh, divide a Hermitian operator with some constant, some real valued constant, it will be still Hermitian. So, um, the, the shape of this one is almost the same. Yeah, we, you can 
just the observe, uh, we can um, move the minus sign to the uh, Hermitian part and then it will be still Hermitian. So the, uh, um, the total equation shape is exactly like this one. Then we also know that the solution of this um, differential equation will be exactly the same as like uh, exponential minus i uh, um, Hamiltonian divided by um, Haber um, times um, the vector at time t equals zero. So um, now if you, use, uh, if you look at this um, solution form, then what I said was that the, the final state is uh, connected to the initial state, maybe uh, t, equals, uh, uh, t equals t sub one, then it will be connected to, uh, through the unitary operator. And then um, I, in the previous lecture, I mentioned that uh, this kind of, uh, yeah, there should be t, and then there should be t, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, so then uh, um, this kind of shape will be actually, yeah, will be the unitary operator as long as the uh, this h is the Hermitian. So um, that's how these two postulates are co connected to each other. And then, yeah, as I mentioned, um, yeah, these are some summary. Yeah, so uh, this is called as a Planck constant and the value is like this one. And then this h symbol is called uh, Hamiltonian. To provide you one more um, example showing uh, uh, such uh, where the um, vector uh, dif differential equation can represent the status of the some um, um, some objects. So let me uh, use this example. This example is uh, is from the um, uh, reference for this um, um, uh, for this class, and then. Um, the um, statement is similar to what you uh, what I showed you before. So yeah, compared to previous case, yeah, now we are considering two um, masses, uh, and each of them still has the mass of A, and then they are connected to not only to the walls, but they bo both of them are also connected to each other. So in this case, um. We want to you know, set up the uh, similar uh, differential equation and try to solve those problems. And then for uh, to, you know, to be more specific, we have to also define some of the property, uh, some of the variables. The first thing is that we are assuming that here is the um, neutral position when there is no forces involved. Yeah, so yeah, at the at time t equals, uh, uh, we, without any of additional forces applied to here, then they will just start here. And then I just define this position as a um, um, position of one uh, um, position. Um, uh, sorry, uh, not, not at time t equals zero, but uh, um, this is the coordinate at zero. And then this is another coordinate for uh, x2 represent the um, location of the uh, second mass. And then we, I will also define this one as the zero point. And typically, the mass will either move to the right or left. And then I will um, represent the re uh, displacement from this um, you know, equivalent uh, equilibrium uh, position as uh, x1, and similarly for this x2. And similar to the previous um, problem, I will assume that at time t equals zero. I will assume that uh, uh, this um, um, maybe yeah this uh, mass is initially displayed uh, displaced at uh, some length, and then I will call this amount as x one zero, and then for this guy, if it is uh, also displaced by some amount, then th um, I will call this amount as a uh, x two zero at time t equals zero. And finally, yeah, one more assumption is that at time t equals zero, there was no uh, speed. So they were displaced, uh, displaced by x sub one, one at, uh, at time t equals zero, but the uh, initial, uh, initial velocity at this position is zero. And similarly for this guy. So um, 
I'm assuming that V sub one is zero, uh, V sub one at T equals zero is zero and V sub two at T equals zero is zero as well. And so these are the uh, initial condition for this problem. And then now let's try to solve this. Uh, uh, let's set up the um, differential equation corresponding to for uh, to this situation. To set up the uh, um, differential equation, the first thing is uh, is that we have to consider the uh, Newton's second law for the, this first mass. So um, f equals m a, meaning that um, m times x one uh, second derivative equals to the sum of the all the forces uh, applied to here. So the first force coming from this um, first um, um, spring and the amount of force applied by, uh, um, applied by this um, spring is proportional to K times X1. But we also have to consider that uh, when the X1 is displaced to the right, to the right direction, then the direction of the force is left. So we have to again use the negative sign for the um, for this force. What about the force applied by this spring? Well, uh, this spring, yeah. Assume that um, when we uh, extend this, uh, if if I displace this um, second mass more than the first mass, then the overall uh, um, increase of the um, this uh, spring we can be obtained by x uh, x two minus x one. Yeah. So this is the amount of um, uh, relative uh, uh, length increase of this one, and then the the amount of force applied by this spring is uh, calculated by multiplying k. And what about the direction? If we extend it. Um, yeah, so if the this value is larger than zero, which means that the spring is longer than the um, equilib uh, equilibrium size, then what it what it will do is it will try to um, pull this mass towards to the uh, right hand side, and also um, this one will yeah, pull this uh, mass to the left uh, left direction. So. For, from the perspective of the first mass, it will be plus sign, okay? And then what about the second mass? Yeah, from the, uh, for the second mass, the, um, the time, uh, the uh, um, acceler acceleration of the second mass can be yeah, re uh, represented by um, um, second, derivative, second time derivative of the X2. And then for this case, yeah, for uh, for the amount of x two minus x one, in this case, if this value is larger, then again, the um, spring is longer than the equilib equilibrium length, and then in that case, the this uh, second mass will be uh, pulled uh, will be pulled by this guy to the left direction. So the um, the sign of the of this force should be minus, and uh, finally, I should consider the amount of force applied by this spring, and then when the x two is positive, which means that the spring will be compressed, and then spring will uh, apply the force towards the to the left direction. So um, in that case, it will be k x two. So this is the. Uh, uh, um, Linear equation, uh, um, uh, um, differential equation, I can uh, find. And then, yeah, let me just uh, simplify this one, which means that uh, it is minus k, and there is another minus k, it will be 2k x1, and then the k x2. And for this one, it is minus, minus plus k x1, and then minus k2, uh, k x2, and minus k. So it will be minus 2k x2. So now what we can do is convert this um, uh, simultaneous equation into the form of the um, dif um, matrix equation. So what we can do is, um, um, yeah, 
we can collect the uh, common factor of M and it will be X1 uh, time uh, double dot and for each of them. And then I can also set up the uh, this way and it will be X1 and X2. And what about this first equation? It will be minus two K and it will be K. And then the X for the uh, second equation, it will be K and minus two K. So, um, and then yeah, here, what I can do is um, um, move this M to the uh, right-hand side, then it will be all uh, divided by M and I can erase. And moreover, I can also note that uh, uh, both of the components are, I have the uh, second time derivative. So I can, yeah, I can move these um, two double dots and then um, I can just uh, rewrite. Like this one. So now, yeah, I obtain this, um, new uh, differential, uh, differential equation, uh, different, uh, vector differential equation. And of course, this is not exactly the same shape of the original um, um, typical uh, shape because this one is a first time derivative compared to the other one. And then this one has the um, uh, I multiplied to the Hermitian operator here. It is uh, yes, slightly different because it has a, a second time derivative, but and, and then this one is uh, simply the Hermitian because now you can see that they are symmetric in the um, when uh, and each of the components are the uh, real value. So this is a Hermitian operator, and there is no multiplication of i in front of it. But because this is second derivative, those uh, that um, situation is similar. So what I'm trying to yep, show is that in principle, we can solve uh, this equation, uh, this, um, um, this uh, vector differential equation um, for whatever method, but let's also try to use uh, this, uh, try to solve this problem using the um, um, eigenvalue, uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector method. So um, as I mentioned before, yeah, we can summarize the current um, um, given problem in terms of the um, this um, vector differential equation, and then the solution of this one will also um, have a, um, very similar to the solution of the um, Schrodinger equation. And then for yeah, of course, for the um, Schrodinger equation case, this um, matrix will be definitely unitary matrix. While for this one, it is not uh, necessarily uh, unitary. Actually, it is not unitary. And then, but still, we can uh, learn a lot of um, um, in insight from this uh, by solving this equation or this problem. So, um, yeah, one of the, uh, well, yeah, so now what we can do is we can um, um, make an abstraction and then turn, uh, consider. Um, the previous um, um, this matrix equation as um, um, abstract um, vector equation, then yeah, the, the that vector equation can be um, um, considered in this way. And that and now what we want to do is following. Uh, I want to consider the um, yeah, from the perspective of this um, differential equation. I want to yeah, figure. I I, I want to. Um, interpret the meaning of x sub one and x sub two, and then the um, the the, uh, the meaning of the x one is the dis, uh, displacement of amount of the first mass, and the x two is the displacement of the um, mass two. The problem is when we are trying to solve the uh, this equation, the x x one value is not independent of the uh, value of x two. Because um, if we are just uh, trying to um, um, displace uh, the first mass by x1 amount, then x2 will also um, uh, will receive some additional uh, some change of the force yeah, due to this uh, coupling uh, spring. 
so um in intuition uh, in in uh, when when you are trying to understand the uh, meaning of uh, each of these components then intuitively x1 and x2 is a good uh, variable to use however however in terms of solving the um, differential equation that's not a good um, um, variable so instead of uh, trying to solve this problem using the uh, x1 and x2 representing the um, uh, coordinate of each of the uh, math, we can think about some other option. So um, instead of trying to use that one, what we can do is turn this problem into an um, eigenvalue problem and then yet try to solve that um, problem in the um, eigenbasis. And then in that case, the, um, the omega, um, omega operator, where the, this matrix will turn into the shape of the diagonal form. And then once it, is, it becomes a diagonal form, then, the, um, then two of the eigenmodes will be decoupled to each other. So let me just um, um, work out some more details for this page. So let's try to find out the uh, eigenvectors of uh, this omega. So yeah, omega is like this. And then we know that uh, to find out the um, um, eigenvectors and eigenvalues, we have to solve the uh, determinant problem. And in this case, uh, it is uh, omega minus uh, lambda i, which means that uh, we have to find out two k over m and k over m and k over m minus two K over M. And now I have to apply this one, which is minus Lambda and minus Lambda and the determinant. And the determinant of this one is um, square of this, which is simply two K over M plus K now and squared minus um, the multiplication of these two, which is K squared over M squared. And we want this to be zero. So, Oops, um, yeah, not k, but uh, it is it is lambda, and this is what we are trying to find. And then from this one, yeah, we can immediately say uh, find out that the solution of this one will be lambda equals uh, minus two k over m plus minus k over m. Yeah, something like this one. So from this one, we can find out that the um, the eigenvalue of this problem is either the uh, upper, co upper com combination, which is minus k over m, or a lower combination, which is minus three times k over m. So these are the two um, eigenvalues. And then now we should be able to find out the corresponding eigenvectors, uh, eigenvector problem. Now for the lambda equals uh, minus k over m, what we have to do is plug in this lambda into here and here, then this uh, that problem will become the, um, um, yeah, so if I plug in minus k over m to here, then it is, uh, this part will become minus k over m, k over m, k over m, and finally this will be minus k over m. And we want to find out a and b, which will make the, uh, Multiplica multiplication result will become zero. So, and then each of the uh, multiplication is related to minus k over m times a plus k over m b. And similarly for the k over m a minus k over m b. And both of them should become zero, which means that you know, this relation and then uh, this relation and this relations are the same. and that simply means that um, A should be equal to B. So the, um, the corresponding um, eigenvector for this eigenvalue should be that uh, yeah, A and B should be the same, which means that we can say that the eigenvector is this one, where we can uh, think about the normalized case, which is the square root of one over square root of two. And let's label 
this case as the uh, first uh, first eigenvector. So let's use the Roman numeric uh, Roman num numeral one. And similarly, if you are trying to find out the uh, lambda uh, lambda equals um, minus three three k over m, then you will also obtain that the uh, eigenvector will be um, will be something like minus uh, one minus one. So these are the two results we will start and uh, we, uh, we will use. And for here, yeah, I know that um, uh, for the uh, omega, it is, um, yeah, so if we, um, you uh, apply the omega on a numeral one, a Roman numeral one uh, basis, then I know that it will uh, appear with this uh, um, with this um, um, eigenvalue, but uh, for the convenience of the future uh, further discussion, let's um, redefine this value as the um, omega sub i squared, and also similarly for the uh, for the uh, Roman numeral two, yeah, we will also define this part as the omega sub, omega sub two squared and like this one. So what that means is that the omega uh, Roman numeral one is the square root of K over M and the Roman uh, numeral two omega is the square root of um, three K over M. Yeah, so these are the result we are going to use. And yeah, by doing that, we had uh, a lot of, uh, yeah, we obtained um, a lot of um, advantage yeah, compared to the previous um, equation like this one. And the point is the following. If I try to solve uh, this uh, differential equation using these bases, then what I can do is I can start the, uh, I can uh, start with the definition of uh, x of t as the x one of t uh, one. Well, yeah, let's use this uh, Roman numeric numerals and the x of two x of two t uh, multiplied by two. Then if I plug in this result to here. Then the first uh, different. Uh, uh, then the left hand side will be simply the i double dot of t uh, multiplied to one, and i double dot uh, of two of t and two. And what about the right hand right hand side? If you apply omega to here, then we know that um, um, because of this um, above relation. We will just obtain that. Um, yeah, um, it will be just a, um, omega i squared multiplied by x one t, and it will be just a one. And then similarly for the second term, it will be uh, minus omega sub two squared omega two uh, x two of t and two something like this one. And for here, we know that the uh, vector X and the vector, uh, sorry, vector Roman numeral, Roman numeral one and uh, Roman numeral two are orthogonal to each other, actually orthonormal uh, to each other. So if I just uh, you know, multiply um, bra vector for the uh, one, then only this part X one, Double that, yeah. Let me just uh, uh, um, omit the uh, t part. Then uh, it is uh, omega one squared x one. And then if I apply the second one, then it will be similar to x two minus omega x uh, two x two. And then these two relations can be also represented in terms of the. Uh, vector uh, matrix uh, equation form, then now this uh, overall uh, relation turned into the this um, diagonal shape.
like this one. So the, the advantage of this equation compared to the uh, original equation like this one is that um, now x1 and x2 are not coupled to each other. So what we can do is we can just uh, directly solve, uh, individually solve this problem and this problem um, independent of each other. Yeah, and then for this one, we already know about the solution form. So for the first case, we know that it should look something like uh, a times cosine um, omega i t plus b sine omega i t. And then um, if we consider the, um, the, um, the um the speed of this guy then the yeah the uh, this uh, x1 is the combination of original x um this x1 value and x2 value but because the initial uh, initial velocity of each of the mass is zero so the combination of these um these values a uh, linear combination of these values for the speed will be still zero. So we know that for at a time t equals zero, where yeah, I should say that the first time derivative at, um, at t equals zero, then yeah, it will be something like um, 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 minus omega i a sine omega, uh, omega one t and then plus, uh, omega one b cosine omega one t but uh, we, we know that at time t equals zero this will be zero and then this will be one so uh, for this one to be zero then we know that b should be zero so uh, we can just ignore this um, second part and then uh, for the at time t equals zero yeah we don't know the um, uh, value for a yet. So let's just uh, use uh, use this one as uh, x sub Roman numeral one uh, at t equals zero. And for the similar, for a similar reason, and for the x2, we can also obtain this kind of solution, which depends on the initial value of x sub um, Roman numeral two and it will depend on this um, eigenvalues. So I just uh, proved that we can obtain to this, uh, these two results, uh, yeah, these two lines. And then now let's try to re rewrite uh, this, um, uh, this um, uh, vector. And then now we can just uh, plug in this result to, to here and here then uh, we will obtain this line. And then for this one, let's also try to you know, plug in t equals zero. Then t equal, x of x at t equals zero equals to this result. Yeah, so it is just, a, uh, it, it might look like a, I'm just rewriting everything. And now what I'm trying to do is um, try to find out the, another uh, um, real, uh, equation for, x sub um, Roman uh, Roman numeral one at a time t equals zero. Well, to find out this one, all I have to do is just apply, uh, multiply the uh, bra vector of the uh, Roman numeral one basis. Then um, x sub one at time t equals zero is just the uh, um, inner product between the um, i uh, number uh, Roman numeral one vector and then um, x vector at time t equals zero. Similarly for the x, um, x sub two. And now we plug in this result back to here. Yeah, so yeah, this one will go here and this result will go here. And then this is the um, a, a result of the uh, plug in all those numbers. And now we know that this is the, um, um, scalar value, so we can uh, swap the order of the multiplication between this part, uh, this factor, and this factor. And if I move everything to uh, to the right of this uh, um, cat factor, then it might look like uh, 
multiplication of the bra cat uh, sorry cat bra and cat and then if i do the same thing for this one then we have both of these will go on to the right hand side then i will realize that uh, you can realize that uh, at the at the right hand rightmost part both of, both of the term has this common factor so yeah we can just uh, rearrange uh, this um, this line into this way and finally yeah we can claim that this uh, yeah this part this part corresponds to operator because i as i mentioned in the one of the previous lecture i said that one way to create the operator is by combining the um, cat and bra with the outer product and and this is exactly the shape of the outer product of the cat and bra vector and then yeah so you can you can be convinced that uh, this is the operator of course this operator is not unitary so yeah, you might not be a, a proper uh, notation to represent this one, but what I want to point out is that uh, um, this um, uh, the original uh, vector equation, uh, uh, sorry, vector differential equation can be uh, the solution of this one can be re-represented in in the form of the um, vector at time t is the is connected to the vector at time t equals zero through some operator and then for for a specific case that uh, this part is um, product of the um, i and then some hermitian operator then the corresponding um, this part will become the uh, unitary so um, that's uh, how i can um, make the an anal analogy between the um, solution of the um, classical mechanical case for this one and then the um, solution for the quantum mechanical case so if i summarize what we did up to now is uh, following um yeah well uh, what we did was instead of trying to uh, um, solve the um, differential equation directly we first find out the uh, uh, solve the um, eigenvalue problem of the uh, given um, um, operator, Hermitian operator, and then for the uh, uh, to to go further, what we did was we tried to find out the initial condition for the um, um, coefficient of the um, new um, eigen basis, and then yeah, the procedure was the following, and then yet yeah, to yet yeah, yeah, to explain. Uh, to, fi to find out these values um, and then how, how we can connect uh, these values to the original um, initial value for the uh, this, um, displacement and then this displacement, then uh, we can use uh, this relation. So we know that uh, um, x of t can be uh, represented as the sum of the, um, well, uh, the um, sorry. X of T can be represented or expanded in terms of the um, um, the basis representing the displacement of this one or displacement of this one. So yeah, the um, the basis representing only the displacement of the uh, mass one is. Uh, um, uh, written with the uh, um, Arabic uh, Arabic number one basis base, and then the the uh, um, the displacement of the mass two will be uh, represented with the uh, number two basis, and then each of them will have the coefficient in front of them, like this one. So, yeah, considering this relation then the calculation of this one simply means that then we have to um, yeah, replace the t with the zero and then the um, this um, inner product can be um, represented as the uh, vector uh, multiplication like this one so yeah eventually the 
uh, x sub uh, Roman numeral one at the time equals zero can be uh, represented as the sum of these two um, initial values. Similarly, for the x2, yeah, we can obtain the similar result. And the, uh, the reason we have different signs here is because um, when we found out the um, eigenvectors uh, representation in the um, column vector, yeah, they look like this one. And finally, for the step three, yeah, what we did was because we found out each of these um, values at a time t equals to zero, then all we did was multiply the omega sub uh, omega of um, uh, cosine of the um, omega sub one uh, t and omega sub two t. And now we should actually realize that the main goal of uh, this problem was not to try to find out the um, um, coefficient of the, this uh, x1 and x2, but um, this x1 and x2 value, like uh, this shape, but we were interested in the um, value of the x sub one at some time t. So how can we find out this one? Well, uh, that's also quite straightforward because we know that uh, um, this factor is always, uh, I, well, I, yeah, maybe I can, yeah. So X of T is always um, um, appear, at, can be, can also appear as the linear combination of X1 and X2. So to try to find out this value, all we have to do is multiply a bra vector corresponding to one to this one. So what we, we can do is just multiplying this one and then we, because we already know the full shape of this um, vector, uh, this vector. So yeah, what we just need to know is what happens if I multiply one vector on the Roman numeral one vector and also for the Roman numeral two vector. And then yeah, you can also find out such kind of relation quite easily because um, one vector will appear, one vector bra will appear as the um, one zero, and then the um, this Roman numeral appears as a one one. So it will just uh, and then yeah, I should not forget about the um, um, normalization constant, which is the square uh, one over square root of two. So it will be square root of two. So if we just multiply them, then it will look like this one. So that's how we obtain this one. And for the second case, um, for the yeah, for this case, um, the only difference is that it will have the minus sign at here. So yeah, the the value will be still the same. And if we uh, so yeah, with these values, we can replace these. Uh, uh, yeah, each of these value will be replaced by one over square root of two, and then we will obtain this coefficient. Similarly, for the x2, if we do the same logic, then yeah, we can obtain this result. And uh, yeah, because now we can obtain that each of the x1 and x2 in terms of the, uh, with respect to the initial value at x1 and x2 at time t equals to zero, then they will be connected to each other through this um, 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 non-diagonal uh, matrix. So yeah, if you remember in the previous, uh, in, in our uh, solution up to now, we mainly solved all the problem in terms of the eigenbasis. And then in that case, the uh, matrix appears in the form of the diagonal matrix. So each of the solution was uh, straightforward, but to find out our final goal of the knowing uh, where this um, mass is and then where does this mass goes. Yeah, to find out that one, then we have to rewrite or re-represent the entire um, um, vector equation, vector differential equation in the form of the, uh, um, with the basis of the location basis. So, uh, or position base. And then the, um, again, yeah, still um, this, um, uh, yeah, 
if we just use the eigen basis, then the, the same solution will appear in completely different shape. But the um, internal um, the, uh, the state represented by this vector and this vector are the same vector. And then the uh, always uh, and whichever um, basis we are using, the final basis is final vector is always um, connected to the initial vector through the uh, multiplication of the of a uh, uh, matrix. And I also want to point out that this matrix is independent of the initial value. All it does is it is being applied to the initial vector and then the final state will be obtained. So um, this um, one and this one are independent of the initial state. And then that's why we call this um, um, operator as the propagator. And yeah, finally, yeah, let, if I just try to summarize what we did up to now, then yeah, it can be also re-represented in this way. So what we did was we first tried to uh, find, uh, find out the solution of the eigenvector corresponding to the um, Hamilton, um, um, Hermitian operator in here. And then what we did was we constructed the propagate, uh, propagator in terms of the uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And then the final uh, state will, be, will appear as the form of the abstract vector and depending on what information you are interested, it can be um, represented in the basis of the eigenbasis, or it can be also uh, represented in the um, displacement basis, meaning that um, each of the vector components will um, represent the position of each of the um, individual mass. If we consider the solution of the uh, differential equation, then we can see that actually there are, uh, there are some cases when the solution becomes very simple. Yeah, for example, if the initial state was one of the um, eigenkets, then yeah, for example, um, let's assume that the initial, uh, initial state was the um, uh, Roman numeral one eigenket, then uh, the time um, time evolution of this state can be obtained by multiplying the um, propagator on the on this state uh, on the on this initial state, and then we have, we know that the uh, um, propagator is this shape, and then eventually you will obtain this kind of solution. And you can see that now, if the um, initial state was um, um, one of these then the uh, solution will be a, a periodic function in time. And if you um, plug in um, Roman numeral two instead of one, then you will obtain similar re uh, result with the, uh, uh, with the omega, omega sub two as the um, oscillating frequency. And for this case, we call this solution as the uh, normal modes of the vibration. And what does this mean? Yeah, so yeah, let's uh, look. Uh, let's um, um, look at the um, actual solution corresponding to this um, um, Roman numeral one case, or one of the eigenkat uh, case. Then, um, if we plug in, well, we know that the, uh, this um, Roman numeral one state is uh, can be represented in this. Um, um, in this, um, uh, with, uh, by this um, um, column vector. And then when we represent the, uh, um, the, the solution in terms of the um, column vector, then we are basically assuming that we are using the um, basis representing the um, displacement of each of the, uh, each of the mass. And then yeah, if we just plug in this one into here, then we will obtain this kind of solution. So what does this solution mean? What this says is the following. As, as you can see it, it, here, the, uh, the first component corresponds to the displacement of the first mass. And the second uh, component corresponds to the sec uh, displacement of the second mass, which means that, and, and then we know that 
both of the um, both of the mass are displaced by the same amount in the same along the same direction. So when uh, this is uh, displaced by um, this amount, then this one will be also displaced by the same amount. And if one, if this one was um, displaced further, then it will be also displaced by the same amount, and so forth. So whenever the first uh, mass is oscillating, uh, oscillating around here, then this one will be um, also following the same pattern, and then they will be basically synced. So in this case, in my yeah, even though there is some um um um. Um, spring, um, the, uh, there is no uh, contribution of the of this spring to such kind of motion because um, they always move in the same along the same direction by the same amount of um, displacement, which means that this um, spring won't be either um, uh, um, compressed or um, extended. So. Um, uh, yeah, the entire system or the combination of all of these basically behaves like a single uh, single mass. And then in this case, we call this kind of mode as the center of mass mode. Then what about the other mode? The other mode is completely opposite. Yeah, if we plug in this um, you know, a vector representation of this uh, Roman numeral two, in the basis of the uh, displacement of, of each of the each of these, then what it says is that the component corresponding to the first one and then second one uh, correspond uh, component corresponding to the displacement of the first mass and then um, um, the component corresponding to the displacement of the second mass. They their magnitude is the same and then they have opposite sign. So what this means is when whenever the first mass is moved by some amount, another mass, the second mass will be um, displaced by the same amount, but in opposite direction. And then if um, this um, mass is displaced by this one, and then uh, the second one will be displaced by the same amount, but in opposite direction and so forth. So if you imagine how these two um, mass will behave, then they will always move along different direct, opposite direction with the same amount. So um, if you uh, think about this is, uh, situation, so th what that means that whenever it is moving along this one and it is moving like this one, and whenever it is going away, yeah, it will also go away, which looks like um, they, uh, they are, um, coming together and going away and coming together and going away. So that one somehow looks like a breathing. Yeah, so yeah, in this case, we call such kind of mode as a breathing mode. And then you also can see that this center of mass and then the breathing mode has different oscillating frequency. And then in this case, this one is much faster. Um, um, it is oscillating at much higher frequency compared to this one. And finally, if we um, generally uh, the, the initial state of um, um, this kind of mechanical system will be uh, arbitrary com uh, linear combination of one and two mode. So um, if we look at the look at each of the normal modes, then yeah, we can immediately see that each of the mode follows its own um, um, normal frequency. However, because uh, because each of the mass appears as the linear combination of these two modes, so eventually this might look uh, the the pattern of this oscillation will look uh, very random. And then uh, yes, so um, uh, because there is no common um, frequency, so yeah, um, each of the uh, um, behavior of uh, this mass might look completely random. But if you yeah, remember that these two uh, motions are governed by the uh, governed by only these two normal modes, then the, um, um, the behavior of these uh, two mass system can be more predictable. 
Finally, uh, let's uh, summarize what we just uh, um, uh, derived during um, uh, today's lecture. Um, what we did was we tried to solve uh, this kind of um, differential equation. And then we found that the solution of this one can be represented by the propagator multiplied on the um, initial uh, vector. And then the um, same, uh, this uh, same solution can be either represented by the um, one, two basis, which uh, means that the coefficient, co coefficient of each of the um, eigen basis means the um, displacement of each of the individual um, mass, or if we represent uh, this one using another uh, basis, which was uh, eigen base, um, eigen basis of the um, this um, uh, uh, this uh, matrix or this operator, then um, the meaning of this uh, these two coefficients are completely different, and then yet. Um, Probably it will be easier if I give you um, um, a simpler example, then yeah, you can understand the uh, meaning of this, um, these two component, uh, these two co coefficients easier. So yeah, let's uh, get back to what we uh, started at the beginning of today's lecture. So we uh, consider single simple harmonic oscillator, which was like this one. And then we uh, we solve we found the solution for this um, case, and then we, yeah with the uh, with this um, initial condition zero uh, velocity initial condition, we found that um, um, the position can be represented as the um, harmonic function like this one, and then um, yeah it, exactly with uh, this uh, solution, and then the velocity will be um, uh, is the uh, time derivative of this uh, this solution and then we can obtain this one and if you remember the um, total energy of any of the mass then generally they are the summation uh, um, sum of the uh, kinetic energy and then potential energy and the potential energy of the um, um, uh, this um, uh, harmonic oscillator looks like this one so um, if we plug in these these result into this um, this uh, uh, this uh, total energy formula, then yeah, we, you will realize that the total energy is um, um, independent of the time. Yeah, of course, and then the um, total energy is represented or um, determined by the uh, the size of the amplitude a, and then. If you uh, remember the um, result of the pre uh, previous page, then we know that uh, uh, each of these, uh, these value will actually um, be up, um, multiply, uh, yes, yeah, those value will be multiplied by either cosine or omega sub one t or cosine omega sub two t. So um, um, the behavior of this one, is basically similar to uh, uh, the, the case for this one. And then the, if we also calculate the total energy corresponding to uh, two of these masses, and then the, eventually you will obtain that the total energy solution will look like uh, this one, but with a little bit of different um, um, uh, result. And then the, um, and uh, you will also realize that the uh, um, total energy it can be described by um, x sub one and x sub two, like um, amplitude here. So uh, the the role of this x one and x two is the same as the role of this a um, a amplitude, and then the, so. Um, the point here is that uh, yeah, even though the same solution, yeah, this is the, uh, uh, this solution or this sol uh, this solution, uh, these two solutions are the same solution for this given um, differential equation. But depending on which basis we are using to represent uh, each of the um, vector, then the coefficient corresponding to the each of the vector 
sometimes might imply uh, uh, mean uh, represent the displacement of the mass, or sometimes um, the uh, if we obtain this one by consider uh, by projecting this vector um, in terms of this basis, then the uh, the coefficient no longer uh, implies the uh, displacement, but it actually means that uh, um, the amount of energy um, uh, stored in uh, stored between uh, uh, stored in these uh, two masses, uh, two coupled mass system. So yeah, the similar situation actually happens in the uh, quantum mechanics. Uh, Unfortunately, I probably won't have time to explain such kind of detail, but even in the uh, in quantum mechanics, even the same vector can, yeah, even if you are just given a vector, represent a, a vector uh, representing the quantum state of some mass, then just with the vector, you sometimes you can calculate the position of the mass, or sometimes you can calculate the energy stored by the mass or the uh, momentum stored uh, carried by that uh, mass. So such kind of situation can be also uh, understood if you, um, um, you, if you understood, uh, if you imagine this kind of case. So yeah, again, in this case, the same um, solution uh, as those, uh, the, the vector is not changed, but depending on which um, basis we use and then, um, on which basis we project our base, uh, our vector on, and then the obtained result sometimes may be, uh, um, may represent the um, um, position, or sometimes it might uh, represent the energy. So yeah, such kind of structure also um, is um, encoded or um, can um, can be um, understood in terms of the quant uh, classical mechanics. And then similar situation happens also in the quantum mechanics. Okay, yeah, so I will stop uh, today's lecture here and I will continue in the next um, uh, lecture.